There's a few recipes for this floating around the interwebs. Uh, this right here is called refrigerator fudge. And I'm going to share with you my special recipe that I use um, that is pretty precise and close to a fudge that you would make on a stovetop um, with just a few simple ingredients. And now what you're seeing here is the transfer sheet. I use the iDesigns program on our website, icingimages.com. I chose which design I wanted to print on the transfer sheet. And now I'm going to show you how to make this fudge and how to transfer your image onto the fudge. So what you'll need is a standard cake mix. Uh, what works best with the semi-transfer sheets is anything that is white or even a yellow. You'll need some chocolate chips, some white chocolate chips, not melting wafers. Now a lot of people ask, well, what's the difference between a chocolate chip and a melting wafer? A melting wafer has a higher salt content, and we don't want that. We want some really yummy, natural goodness of that white chocolate chip. So you want that. Seven ounces of sweetened condensed milk, four ounces of whole milk, two and a half tablespoons of butter, and then if you really want to amp up your flavor, um, I'm using bubblegum powdered flavor from More Than Cake. This is really fun. This is great, especially for kids that aren't allowed to have gum but really like the idea of gum. It gives them that really yummy flavor in there. So without further ado, let me go ahead and start this recipe for you guys. So for your cake mix, you want to measure out about 8 ounces of it. Um, usually that comes out to about a cup. So. I'm actually going to go about six ounces on this. Now the reason why we're using a cake mix is because we want it to have that denser flavor and we want a party flavor, a cake batter flavor is what we're going for. We also want to mix in 12 ounces of chips. So um, this right here is going to bring up your scale right up to the pound mark. And it's not shown in here, I didn't show you guys earlier, um, but it's already mixed into, into my powder. Um, there's confectioner sugar inside here for your recipe. It'll be included in the recipe link, but you're also going to add um, four ounces of powdered sugar. So then we're going to add our sweetened condensed milk. You know, all that goopiness in there. Thanks for tuning in. And once again, you guys, I'm sorry for being on this side, but if you are asking questions, I will answer them for you after the segment. And our four ounces of milk. And then two and a half tablespoons of butter. Just plop them right in there. And then for your flavoring, I'm going to do about an eighth of a teaspoon in there. Just sprinkle it in. Oh, that smells so good. So you don't even need to mix this. It's just like this. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's just like there. It's all in there. And you're just going to pop it into the microwave for two minutes. So while this is going, I will show you how to get your pan prepared. So take a 8-inch pan. This is an 8x8. I've prepared it with some nonstick foil. Um, you want to pay close attention, make sure you don't have any wrinkles on the bottom. If you do see any little creases, just take your finger and smooth it out. Once you've selected a design for your sugar sheet, which was really difficult for me, I could not decide what I wanted to do. You'll print it out onto your, your transfer sheet. And I think what we're going to do, since we're doing that bubblegum flavor for the kids, maybe we'll do some, we'll do some more skulls. Yeah, we'll do some skulls. This will be really cute. So you see the, the transfer sheet. Now somebody asked uh, a few days ago if you can directly paint onto these or write on them. Yes, you can. With an edible marker, uh, I did some backwards writing and it does transfer just fine. So all you need to do is fit your sugar, your transfer sheet into the pan as you want. So you know what? I'm going to do a couple of different patterns for this one. And it'll be okay if there's some overlapping. I'm not too worried about it. Now when you place your transfer sheet into the pan, 
you want it print side up. The acetate side should be down in your pan, right in there. So, and then I have this cute floral pattern. I think I'm going to try this one too. I'm going to put a portion of this one in here. So this should fill up the other half of my pan. And I'm just eyeballing it. Ready? Acetate side down, print side up. So now you've got your pan prepared. It's that easy. See, we actually finished this part even before our little recipe was, was already prepared. So now when you take your recipe out of your microwave, be very careful because it is going to be super warm. Not quite hot like lava, but, you know, take precaution. You'll see it's all there. It's all nice and fluid. Go ahead and give it a nice stir. Mix it all together. Now you don't have to worry about popping it back into the microwave for 15 second intervals or whatever. The two minute mark is just fine. Depending on your wattage, um, the microwave that I'm using today is a 800 watt. So it's a smaller microwave, but this worked out just fine. Now if you feel that the um, everything is not fluid as it should be, then you can pop it in for maybe like 15 seconds. But this looks just great and I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Looks good. So we definitely want to get it in there while it's still fluid and nice and hot because the transfer sheet only works when your medium that you're putting on top of it is nice and hot. Now I used a confetti cake mix so there's all that pretty mixture in there. So that's nice and good right there. If you see any chunks left over from your chocolate chips, don't worry, that'll all melt out. And then start from the center and just pour directly on there. Let it spread initially for you. Don't get in there with your spatula just yet. Just continue to pile it into the center and it will push out to the sides for you. Don't tap the pan. You know how like some people will tap the pan to get the air bubbles out? You don't need to do that. So just like that. And I'm going to carefully tilt this forward so you guys can see. It's in there nice. And then I'm going to use some plastic wrap just to seal off the top. If you do see any air bubbles rise to the surface, you can use a uh, wooden cocktail stick to just go ahead and pop those out. But there's really not that many. So again, grab your plastic wrap. Of course, we're on live, so anything can happen. And I am the accidental dentist, so that means that we're going to have just a crazy Dexter moment here with some saran. And then lay more plastic atop. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is to prevent the fudge from drying out on the bottom half. And it also prevents any like weird skin from forming, weird candy skin. Sometimes sugars will try to make weird crystallization at the top, so we don't want that to happen. So then, you're just going to pop that in the fridge for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to pop it into my imaginary refrigerator. And then we're going to pretend that 30 minutes has gone by. And oh, look, fudge. There it is. Now check this out. So. Really easy, what you can do is grab my cutting board and you'll see you can also grab some cutters if you like. So you'll gently take your fudge out of its vessel and turn it over. Now I've already removed the acetate because I was super excited, but I want to show you. There it is. The image completely transfers onto the fudge. Now this is nice and firm because it's right out of the refrigerator. So your image is right on there. It's gorgeous. If you wanted to, you could just go ahead and trim it. And you don't have to worry about the image peeling or separating, breaking apart. It's just fine. And I'll show you better images of this after the broadcast. And if you wanted to, you could use a cutter, like I said. Just make sure that it's nice and clean, that there's no grease on it. Just go ahead and press it down. 
Got a little spin there. Whoop. Live broadcast, of course. I get it stuck. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> so cute. And it tastes like bubble gum. So, again, refrigerator fudge. I will have the recipe for you in the comments. Use your iDesign program with the transfer sheets and you will get this gorgeous fudge. This is a great way to wow your crowd and um, it's especially nice if you're going to any parties or throwing one yourself and you don't have really much time to do anything. You can just throw together this recipe. You saw how quick it was. Leave it in the fridge and then when it's time for dessert, just take it out of the fridge and start cutting it up and share it with your friends. Thanks guys.